Welcome to Technically Speaking. Today's topic focuses on material buildup or residue or what we'll call galling on brake tooling. And we'll take a look at identifying the galling, removal of the galling, and then how to prevent the galling from happening in the first place. As a standard practice, I'm going to want to make sure my tooling is ready for bending before I use it. So as I take it out of my storage, I'll give it a quick visual inspection and maybe even a quick wipe down. And if everything was stored properly, I'm ready to bend. Looking closely, it seems like we have a die that hasn't held up too well. The areas that appear to be worn are actually the part of the die that does not have buildup on it. Notice the buildup tends to look like shiny lines or irregular shapes. And if you're starting to get inconsistent bends or marking on the material, that means the buildup on the die shoulders could be work hardening as well. Okay, so we have buildup on the shoulder of the die. We've determined that and we want to remove that from the die. So a common way would be to use an abrasive pad. The white is actually a non-abrasive pad and the maroon is actually a very fine abrasive pad. And we could use either one of these. I'd probably start with the white as long as it works, why not? Anything too heavy is going to probably start changing the dimensions of your die and you really don't want that, you just want to remove the debris. So let's take a look at a second scenario. This one isn't quite as severe. We don't have the buildup and the marking that's happening on the material yet. It doesn't look like a bad die. But if you look at the bottom of the V opening, you'll see that there's a flake and you've got some other debris and then maybe a white line at the bottom of the die that appears like, it looks like it's starting to be buildup again. But it's not so bad. We've got a chance to clean this die and not have problems. So from what I see on this die, I'm going to make the assumption that most or all should be able to be just wiped off with a, with a dry rag. So it's a matter of keeping it clean before it gets too bad and that I can't do this. And we're still left with a little bit of buildup it looks like. That one spot could be taken away with our lightest scotch bright in the white color. And I could wipe that down with a couple passes and we'll just wipe any residue left with the rag again. And you can see we now have a perfectly clean die. The best way to prevent buildup is to use the right tools. If I had the right die V opening, make sure it's large enough to keep your tonnage down and also make sure the shoulder radius is the correct shoulder radius. The smaller the shoulder, the more galling is going to happen because it's going to grab in that material. You could do things like a, a paste like a bow lube. I call it a paste but it's actually fairly chalky and it's just something that you can rub right onto the shoulder of the die. You'll have to add, apply that quite regularly but it does work. Another thing you could use is some sort of drape, a urethane drape or a cloth drape. I brought the cloth because it's very tough and it tends to slide off of this rather than building up. But you still need to keep the drape on the die of course. And another idea might be to take a V opening these have been made in urethane for years, but more commonly now you might be able to control the material to be something much more durable in a printed material. And I can just take this, make it match the V opening that I already have in my shop, put it right over the top. So we focused on the die today and removing that galvanil buildup from the shoulders because it's more common. You're going to have more problems with the die and buildup than you will the punch. But don't ignore your punch. The punch will also be coming in contact and it'll get buildup and you're going to want to keep those clean as well. So hopefully you learned a little something about a very common problem in most shops. If you like what you saw today, please subscribe or like us. If you have any ideas for future videos and topics, please email us to the email that you see on the screen. And technically speaking, now you know.